Was this knowledge, this scientific knowledge, available for the Muslims in history? As far as the earlier Muslims are concerned, some of the facts were known, some were not known, not in the same way as we have come to know by the first today. And I'll give you the reason why later. But the main question is concerned that were they aware about these aspects of fasting? In a different way, may not be in the same way as we know today. That reminds me, I read a book by Maulana Abul Hassan Nadwi, Arkanul Arba, where Maulana Abul Hassan Nadwi, he writes in his book, Arkanul Arba, and he gives an incidents at the time of Khalifa Harun Rashid. And there he gives a dialogue between the Christian physician of Khalifa Harun Rashid and a Muslim by the name of Ali bin Hussein bin Waqid. And this Christian physician of Khalif Harun Rashid, he says that the Quran is considered to be a book of sciences. And we know there are two types of sciences, science of the body, science of the soul. So what does your Quran speak about medical science? So Ali bin Hussein bin Waqid, he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in half a verse of the Quran, he combines both these sciences. When he says in Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 31, eat and drink, but do not waste in excess. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes not the people who waste. Then the Christian scientist says, but what did your Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa say about medicine? So he said that he's mentioned that the stomach is the main house of diseases and prevention is the best thing for ailment. And prevention is better than cure. And as I mentioned, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, it's mentioned in Ibn Majah, volume number four, hadith number 3349, the Prophet said, the son of Adam does not fill a vessel more worse, more evil than the stomach. A few morsels are sufficient to keep him on his feet. If he has to eat more, one third of the stomach can be a food, one third drink, and one third should be for his breath. So then that Christian physician said, that means when you had the guidance of your Allah and Prophet Muhammad, we did not require jaliness. Jaliness, he was a very famous non-Muslim physician of that time. So what the Prophet and Allah say is a telegraphic message, which we have done research today. But the Prophet also already has given in a nutshell the message before. And in that same book, Arkan Arba, Mon Abul Hassan Nadwi, he mentions and he gives the example of another non-Muslim scientist who's an American. He says that every human being, whether poor or rich, he should fast for some days every year. It will keep him healthy. And then he says that Islam is the best religion, which has made it compulsory on his followers to fast. And he said that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the best physician who has prescribed fasting. And he said that there's no better healthy way than fasting. And after that tarawi, in which you have to do some exercise, according to him, which helps in digestion. So if you realize that the non-Muslims appreciated the religion of Islam after doing research, Though many of the Muslims are aware about the medical benefits of fasting, but we Muslims, we don't fast for these medical benefits. We fast for sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't fast for the medical benefits. These medical benefits are ancillary. Yeah. Or they may be the, maybe sweet dishes, maybe the dessert. Our main biryani, our main meal course is for pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which we discussed in the objective of fasting. We don't fast for medical benefits. Even if these medical benefits were not there, we Muslims would have fasted for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as what do we do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah gives us back in return. So all the acts that we do, it actually benefits us in various ways in this world as well as in the Akhira. But we Muslims don't fast for these medical benefits. These are just bonuses that we get, irrespective of whether we get or not, yet we'd fast for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, that's good. So when you 
listen to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam look at his life and implement those things immediately you get some benefit in this world subhanallah